We thank you. This is our 13 of our big event today. We're so happy you're here. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we're going to have more great actors coming up to talk about their craft. We're going to have Jeff come back and moderate it. Uh, but we have some announcements before that. We want to remind everybody that Philam Creative is a nonprofit organization, and we depend on wonderful donations from wonderful people like you. So in the event that your Venmo finger is feeling really, really like a, a trigger there, you just want to donate, please, please don't, uh, you know, $2, $1, $50, $500, whatever you want to donate, we appreciate. Thank you in advance. It's at Philam Creative. That's at Philam Creative. Uh, we appreciate that. So thank you. Uh, again, I'm Ed. I'm one of the co-founders and on the board directors. In a minute, I'm going to bring up some wonderful people. Like right now, we want to start by recognizing, because how many of you were here for the first panel? Round of applause. Okay. How many of you are here just for, you just came, for, this is your first panel now, the second panel. All right, welcome, 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 thank you. Thank, you, you could have come a little early, no, I'm just kidding, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, uh, but we do want to recognize the man, the myth, the legend, the person who put this together. This is number 10, this is APX 10. So we want to congratulate the man who put together the other nine. So at this time, we want to bring out the uh, founder of the uh, panel. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Edwin A. Santos. I love it. He's, he's shoving people out of the way. Come on up here. No, no, no. Edwin, we have to come up. We have to recognize you. Come on. There. I Give this young man a big round of applause. Thank you so much. We acknowledge you. Awesome. Okay. And once again, you don't want to say any words? Okay. Edwin is a man of many words. <laughs> That's why he bugs me to say the words for him. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, but those only hurry up. Sorry. Okay. 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 Okay.
also got her to start doing uh, America's Most Wanted, which uh, where most of my friends got their sad parts from. <laughs> <laughs> Espiritu over here. I uh, want to congratulate because I know you just did, you just directed your own film that you wrote called Love and Karma, uh, which stars uh, Belinda Pinello, who is our Filipina actress, and she's a blizzard. Uh, who else? Who else? Judge her 
Rivera, and then we also have, um, they're not starring, they're in supporting roles. Um, we have Bai Ling, who is a Golden Globe nominee, and then we have Eric Roberts, who is an Academy Award nominee, and Joanna Pakula, who is a, uh, no, Joanna Pakula is a Golden Globe nominee, and Eric Roberts is an Academy Award nominee. But they're playing supporting roles to wow. Melissa Pinella. <laughs> screening of uh, Halloween, was it the Halloween screening, yes. where um, you you play the daughter of uh, Rufio, Mr. Dante Bosco. <laughs> um, who knew? Who knew that you were related to Ariana? I know. <laughs> Auntie? that we're just family and that Dante was my dad and in the first season I didn't know that I had a dad so then in the second season when it showed up I was like well we're gonna flip things around here. Well, congratulations <laughs> on having a father. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> my real dad's here by the way. Um, thank you Pops. Where's Pops? Where's Pops? Where are you at? There he is. That was so cool. They drove all the way from the Bay Area. And all of these women right here are from the Bay, so where are my Bay Area folks at? Yeah, that's where well, most of the Filipinos are. But, uh, so thank you for coming back. She's also not only an actress, but she's also a talented musician, singer. Thank you. What's your band called? Oh boy, uh, so the original music is called No Rest Till Death. Um, that's my project with my very talented musical partner. And uh, as far as what pays my bills, I for a couple of corporate cover bands. Fast Times, and then Benistar, which is a Pat Benatar tribute band. Um, <laughs> yeah, good times, it's great. It's great. So you're going to perform after this, yeah. right? <laughs> Only if you do, too. I hear we got some great singers. I mean, you don't Karaoke want machine. You don't want me to do something. <laughs> I'm ready. I'll, I'm ready to hear yeah, you. Do you want some Miguel or Usher? Which one? <laughs> Miguel, 100%. If you beat a kid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> band. You beat a match. I could be the fuse. Boom. 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 <laughs> How talented are Filipinos? <laughs> Amazing. Jeffrey McLeod. Uh, is that how you pronounce your last name? How do you pronounce it? Yeah, McLeod. McLeod? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeffrey, same name, but different spelling. My spelling is better. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us, how do you, how do you, first of all, Clint Eastwood is such a legend. Um, one of the greatest films that he's made uh, was, that I like at least, is Gran Torino, which is an Asian API story. And it was the first time I actually was like, all right, go with Clint. Do want some representation over here. Uh, but then you also cast uh, Eugene Cordero in The Mule. Uh, shout out to you for doing that. Yeah, I love Eugene. He's the best. How did that, how, what was that process like for you? Was that something conscious for you to cast him in it? And um, how has it been working for someone in, in that studio though, because he's with Warner Brothers, right? Like, yeah, he's been with Warner's for, for, I mean, he's had his office there for over 40 years, so he's been there for a long time. Um, now, with regards to Eugene, the nice thing is the role was written for Filipino, and Clint's always been really good at casting off, like, authentically. Uh, when we did, well, I was working for Phyllis Huffman at the time in 2006, we were doing Letters from Iwo Jima, and um, I said, to Clint, do you want to get all Japanese people? I mean, we're in Iwo Jima. 
And he goes, yeah, that would be great. So I was like, okay. So, um, and the movie was in Japanese, so I didn't speak, obviously, so I hired a casting director to help me who was Japanese, and all the auditions were in Japanese, and I was just leaning on her heavily, be like, that, did that look real to you? Like, is that believable? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, that's fair. I was like, okay. Um, so he was really good at that, and when we did, um, when we did Gran Torino, I was working with Ellen Chenoweth at the time, and uh, again, we asked Clint, we go, do you want us to find Hmong people? And he goes, yeah, that would be great. And I was like, oh crap, that's gonna be hard. Uh, it was like 2007, it was like, do a movie who's in it. He's, he was the only actual quote unquote actor that was in the film. Everybody else we got at open calls, we went to Fresno, we went to uh, Warren, Michigan, Troy, Michigan, St. Paul, Minnesota, there was huge pockets of the Hmong community, so we literally would drive or fly or whatever, and uh, hit up the Hmong markets, the radio stations, put ads out in papers, and they showed up. And um, that was one of the more difficult casting experiences um, that I had, but it was also super gratifying. And to see just regular people do this. I mean, it, it's an intimidating thing to be an actor, you know what I mean? And they went, and I think that was the advantage they had. They didn't know how crazy of a, an adventure they were just about to go on. Um, so that turned out to be, um, oh, and honestly, when we read that script, I was like, I hope people watch this. It was my original um, thought of this was, I hope people watch it. I, I think it would be great. And then it just went, I mean, at the time, I think it was Clint's highest grossing movie at the time. And I was like, I was like, you know, he's Dirty Harry. He's the man with no name. But that movie was the biggest movie of his career at that time. Why do you think that is? And, and during that time, and what, what, what year was this when that happened? Uh, Grand Torino uh, was, uh, I think it was released 2008. I'm not gonna lie, I am on, U I love YouTube. I think it's a fantastic thing. And I have, seldom, uh, I have started watching reactors uh, to films. And one thing I constantly see whenever they react to Grand Torino is they have such a strong connection to the relationships. And I think it's something that they can all relate, like everybody's known a jerk. You know, like a very <laughs> abrasive person. And just to see character growth, um, just to see it, because I know even our, our lead actor, he had words about it, which a little hurt a little bit. But if you could see past the gruff, there's character development. And if you only see him for his abrasiveness, you're gonna miss the whole point of the film. Um, that being said, it's also a character. It's not real, you know? So it's just a story, and, and I think it really just connected to us on a very human level. And we all know emotions like that. And um, I think that's the reason why I connected, is just people could relate. Yeah, well, for me, I think when, when I saw it, it was one of the first movies around that time that actually showcased an Asian family, juxtaposed, you know, a white family. Sure. Uh, and it was almost, it, it's a depiction of American story, an American Asian story together and I felt like right at that time is when a lot of Asian actors and artists here were really trying to pay, pound at the ground to like really break down doors. Because uh, I remember when, I, when that auditions came out, it was widely released and every Asian went out for it. Every Filipinos went out for it. I went out for it. I don't know if you guys seen my tape, but. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me back. <laughs> that was Ellen Chenoweth. I was just her associate. <laughs> she did pay me for this. Last day. <laughs> but um, so, what was that like for you uh, in terms of casting an Asian, like for you being Asian yourself and being a casting director and seeing how there was, what was that like? Or do you see lack thereof of of characters that were Asian or? And what did that feel like for you to actually have something like that to cast? I agree 100%. Out of all the ethnic groups in Hollywood, I feel Asians are the least represented uh, across all the platforms. I think that's very true. Um, I agree that we have to write more stories for ourselves. I don't want to just be forced in like, just, I don't know, give it to an Asian guy. No, I want there to be a real meaning of why you cast an Asian person. Like maybe it's customs or whatever. Like Gran Torino, when they're doing all those customs, I love that aspect. You get to learn about a new culture. Like, this is fantastic. So um, I loved seeing that, obviously. And even working on letters. I was spoiled because even though the industry doesn't 
cast us or make too many movies with Asians in it. Clint did two that were almost fully Asian. And of the 10 films I cast for him, two, like, and okay, granted that was not me. The, uh, those were Phyllis. And, but to work on something at that age, because I was that was when I was first starting. So to be like, oh wow, there are Asian, but then I saw the rest of the industry, no one followed. Or it took many years to get something like of late. Yeah, there's a lot more opportunity, which is fantastic to see. But uh, for many years, it's just like they, they, they just weren't telling any stories of ours. So to see it, yeah, it's fantastic. I love it. To grow up and see something uh, that you're like, oh, that's like me. Like even me watching Short Round, you know, in, in Indiana Jones as a little kid. I was like, hey, I can be like that kid. I mean, we had it, but he was the one, you know what I mean? But it is always important to see someone you can relate to, obviously, especially if you want to go into this. Yeah. Shout out to Ki Hoi Kwan. Yeah. <laughs> um, give it up for Jeffrey McLeod, everyone. Diva Vice, everyone. Diva Vice. I've heard all the jokes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you were returning. Uh, you've been here before, so you are a big supporter of um, Filipino Hollywood Actors Panel and Fill That Creative. Absolutely. Thank you for coming back. Uh, what you been up to? What, what have I been Oh my god. I said, it's weird because Dua Mua called me one day and said, do you know how to cast money people? And I didn't, I was like, uh, give me 20 minutes, I'll call you right back. And I hung up and I, I looked up money people. I didn't know what the fuck I'm <laughs> casting director for the past 24 years, I'm, I want to learn, you know, I want to know more cultures, so I got on the internet and learned all about Hmong cultures and um, cast The Harvest, which just went to Cannes um, for Dua, and I did a, an all Cambodian movie, that was really cool too, um, and then I, I fought really hard with the Bang Brothers to not replace their two leads that they, they had lost their agent over for wanting Asian leads. Um, they wanted to give it up and hire white people, and I said, absolutely not, I'll, I'll quit. Um, and we hired two Asian people to play the leads, and that was really cool. And that was about four years ago. And I've been working for Luc Besson for four or five years now. I went Las Real Luzon. I've been doing BET. Now, do y'all see the weirdness in this? <laughs> <laughs> I just am so proud that I worked so hard to be diverse, because it's made a huge difference in my career. <laughs> Inclusion. Uh, what what has your journey been like? Because I know you started as a casting director for America's you know, Most Wanted, and then now you've done a lot of independent films as well. Um, and can you explain? Can you share with us what you see within the independent film circuit, and what's what's thriving, and what's not, and what you know what. Go into it. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, the difference between the studio system and the independent film system is that I can wear my pajamas to work for one of them <laughs> from home. And then the other one, I have to get up and go to Sony. So I prefer oh. independent feature films. <laughs> 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 I think we all prefer to wear our pajamas as well. Other than that. Though, yeah, uh, no, it's different. I mean, look, like, it's like, you know, the studios are slow to move. Um, slow to move uh, to what the independent features are doing, which are being more inclusive and telling more stories. If y'all get a chance to see The Harvest, it'll change your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so touching. And it's not about the Asian guy being the Asian guy and the Asian girl being the Asian girl. It's about a family and all the things that could go wrong within the family. And and the, the ending will kill you, literally you will fall oh. over. It's so beautiful. The Harvest, everyone. I think uh, Drea Castro, did you? Yes, Drea, Drea Castro. Drea Castro is, uh, her, her. I walked in here today and went, wait, from, you're in the Harvest. She's <laughs> a VP of, uh, of our career development here. Um, she also has a movie out uh, called Baldy for the Blind. Um, so she's. Pick up uh, your glasses. Yeah, where is she? Where is she? Right. And Baldy for the Blind, the glasses out there is from her movie. Uh, that is premiering at the Dances with Film Festival on July 2nd, so go see that, it's almost sold out. It's an amazing, inspiring story about a bunch of blind hikers uh, climbing Mount Baldy. 
but she's also an actress, and you cast her in that. Yeah, she's so. great. She's just wonderful. I mean, it's so fun to meet new actors. I do general interviews. I meet you for coffee. I usually buy the coffee. You're welcome to call my <laughs> office anytime. <laughs> Email me anytime. I have an open door policy. I do not do pay to play workshops. I'm 100% against them. And uh, call me anytime. And watch my movie opening September 28th called Dog Man from Luke Besson. Dog Man. I just want to pivot to this side uh, a little bit just because I am just in awe of uh, what Somalia has been able to accomplish in, in the years that I've known her. You, uh, you are also, uh, your grandfather is a playwright, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, my grand, my, actually my, my grand uncle, my oldest brother, is Severino Montano, who is a national artist of the Philippines for his playwriting and directing, and so I, you know, we say Filipinos have, we have performing in our DNA, you know, arts and our, our creativity in our DNA, but I, I really take pride in that. And my, my Lola used to act in his films and was a pretty prolific stage actress in the Philippines. Wow. Yeah, her, uh, her great uncle is on a stamp in yeah. the Philippines. Wow. <laughs> so, so I'm on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> I do my research, y'all. <laughs> Uh, so you did The Lost Symbol, uh, which is, your, was that your first series regular? It was my first on-camera series regular. On-camera series regular. Yeah, voiceover series regular, but different things. Where you even get to kick ass, right? Yeah, you get some, you some, some, some action. So you, so you know, was that, that's on Fox, right? Was that? Uh, it's NBC Peacock. And NBC Peacock. Action, action, I don't know my network, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> NBC. But while you were doing that, you eventually got the series regular part, and uh, you also simultaneously opened up your own production company and decided to EP four feature films while you were a series regular. Let's go into that. <laughs> I would not recommend doing that. <laughs> you know, I knew we were taking on a lot of projects. Um, the company that I co-founded is called Lindley Productions, and um, our mission is really to uplift uh, multicultural voices and talent in front of and behind the camera. And so I booked the on-camera series regular. Um, I'm in Toronto for a year. In the meantime, we have one film, which is my creative baby, um, is a film that uh, I've produced and did not pitch myself to star in, but was pushed to star in. Uh, but uh, it, it's based on my Filipina mom and me. Um, it's based on our relationship. I set it in a sci-fi world. So we have that film, which I produced, which is uh, going into distribu the distribution phase. We had uh, a documentary called uh, Bridesville USA, which it ended up premiering in Sundance, which was in post-production. And then we had another film. Uh, these are all feature-length uh, films. We had a film called Nanny, which was in production in New York. Nanny went on to win the Grand Jury Prize at Sundance in 2022. Uh, and then we had, we had a couple other films in early development uh, and pre-production. So I was literally going to set, <laughs> and it says, by the way, in my contract that I'm not allowed to do producing work while I'm there to put the laptop <laughs> and so, and this is my first series regular, so I'm freaking out because I'm like, I want to do everything, like, like, uh, like what Reggie said. The work product has to be there for us to like continue to get hired. You will always want to be a pleasure to work with, but I'm literally like on conference calls with the team in New York uh, that's in production. Well, while the PA is calling me, like, okay, you have five minutes till you're in hair and makeup. I'm like, okay, okay, hey guys, I got five minutes to go. So I'm like, we're doing this. And then uh, on, the, on the days that I'm not filming, I'm prepping my lines for, you know, prepping my scenes for the next, for my next filming day. But I'm also taking voiceover jobs from recurring clients who are waiting patiently for me while giving notes on cuts from our film that's in post production and trying my best to watch dailies for the film that's in production. <laughs> and it was, um, I honestly am just, I feel so fortunate that I'm alive. <laughs> and that I made it out healthy. Um, it was, I'd say the, the one bad thing is I, I, I don't think I 
could truly get out of each experience. You know, I'm a big believer in you get out of something what you put into it. And so I did spread myself a little bit too thinly, but um, to have two films uh, premiere at Sundance, a, or a documentary at the time that was in post, ended up being nominated for Best Doc at the Indie Spirit Awards. Uh, and then for my own film to go through distribution and we sold it to Roku Channel, it was, you know, to have, so to have a film that all, all three of those films were working on while I was, um, while I was kind of experiencing the height of my acting career was just bonkers. And it all happened during the pandemic, 2021. So it was pretty, it was pretty wild. Incredible. Yeah. Give it up for somebody. <laughs> You know, I, I took up a little too much space during that time, but you know, when we first started out, you know, we take these small roles. We, you know, we are, and, and we're so grateful for them because that's what we've been doing for us. But it was going through a process of realizing, okay, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to do those roles. I want to do bigger roles yeah. now, and then learning expanding because expanding into voiceover because at one point, literally, my family was like. Uh, I would tell them, hey, I'm going to be on such and such TV show, you should watch. And they would literally be like, are you playing something other than a medical professional this time? <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, you know, but they didn't understand how much it takes just to get that part. So I expanded into voiceover, which gave me a different kind of creative outlet, getting to play monsters and giant robots and animals. And uh, But then after that, still, still feeling, you know, that there's more, there's more space that we can take up and more support that we can give to each other. And I realized, oh, I need to produce now because producing actually gives me a, a, a way to have a hand in what stories get to this and to help shape narratives and help shape characters to be the type of characters, three-dimensional, dynamic, you know, like extreme, you know, strong women characters that I didn't get a chance to play when I started. So to me, it's it's really the journey for all of us to learn how to take up space when sometimes culturally we, you know, we, blah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, been a, it's been an adventure. She's being very humble, by the way. Um, she, it's also to voice uh, the first Filipino anime on Netflix, uh, Tresse. So if y'all uh, have seen that, she's in that. Um, also, she, you are about to be on a Shondaland TV show, The Resident, about the White House. Um, and also, um, you, you have been you have been doing your 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 duty as as a producer, right? But meanwhile, you're also paving the way as an actress for everyone. When you decided to do to do the deal, which is the movie that you did with Dean Devlin uh, from Independence Day, guys, also Pinoy. Um, what was that process like? Because it was a, about a Filipino mother and. Uh, in a really dire future, right? That was uh, where people were had to sacrifice their life, right? Um, for in exchange of just normal necessities, right? <coughs> Who came up with that storyline? Can you tell us <laughs> all about that? Uh, yes, uh, I will. I would like to share a little bit of my origin story as a producer because uh, I, I anticipate hopefully it will be um, enjoyable or inspiring to you to some people out here. Um, when I started producing, um, I, I didn't actually know that I was I was getting into producing, but a friend of mine, I used to be an investment banker actually before I became an actress, and an old friend of mine from investment banking came to town and wanted to meet up for dinner, and I was like, great, we hadn't caught up in years. And you know, he stayed in finance. I obviously left and pursued a creative career. And he said, he, he assumed that, you know, like he saw all these guest stars on my resume, he literally sat down and was like, so, 
How much are you work these days? I mean, like, does, does yeah, all these guest stars, what do you get paid, like $50,000 for being on a, a, a guest star on a Chanda Rhyme show? And I, I, I was laughing so hard, and I was like, um, once I like talked him down and told him like reality, what, what, what happened, he kind of, I think he took pity on me, and he literally said, oh, uh, can I help you make a movie? <laughs> and I, I, I was like, really? And I didn't know that he was serious at first. He's like, yeah, you know, I, I have some friends who might want to, you know, learn about Hollywood and, and make a movie. Why don't you maybe pitch us some ideas? And I didn't realize it then that that was the beginning of my producing career. And I, as soon as I left that meeting, I called up all of my Asian friends. I was like, send me your scripts. Send me your scripts because I have a chance to pitch. And I think that these people might, you know, might be into like telling our stories. And I was reading scripts and like really trying to figure out when I was going to narrow down a pitch. And, and then in that process, I realized, wait, I actually have a story in the back of my head that's been there for a long time that I never... I never told anyone, I never did anything about it. And so I, I kind of dusted that off and in the time between that dinner and then when I was gonna meet them for a dinner up in Silicon Valley and pitch to them, I created a little mini pitch for my story and my mom had died. Um, it was a story that helped me deal with her grief. Um, but I, I included it in the pitch of three. And then lo and behold, when I'm at the dinner, you know, I, I start to pitch my, my stories, and the one that I connected with most was the one that they connected with most. And so they, they bought in, and I raised enough money to hire a writer, a WJ writer, um, Solidarity of Strike. Uh, I hired a WJ writer to uh, write the script, and I created, produced it with him. So it was like hand in hand, lots of we, you know, we, we developed the script, because it was my idea, my head, the story, but. I have a lot more respect for professional writers who can do it. I, if I knew if I tried to write it, it would have taken years. So uh, I raised enough money to hire a writer. Uh, we worked on it for probably about a year and a half. And once it was ready, once I felt it was ready to take to market, I brought it to the first person. My first choice was Dean Duggan because he's Filipino. It's set, it's set in a sci-fi world. Uh, there's no one else I'd rather make this movie with. And, Thankfully, I had um, I was in a I was in a, like an infant baby class for parents, and I happened to befriend um, Lisa Devlin, who's also a producer and married to Dean. And so, uh, through that friendship, um, I got the script to them, and within a couple of days, he had read it, and he was like, "Yep, we're in." And so I had I put together the team, I raised the rest of the money to uh, produce the film, and we. We were, off, we were literally off to the races. We filmed it in 2019, about two years after we started. So it was a pretty quick process, but then post took forever because of the pandemic. But that was like, it, you know, it was my way of dealing, it was a way of dealing with my mom's death. And it was, it was literally just something that means incredible, you know, so much to me. I dedicated it to her and, um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm going to watch it on Roku Channel. <laughs> it's called The Deal, guys. It was pretty amazing to, to see this Filipino mom story uh, on TV. And amazing production value. So congratulations to that. Now let's be cathartic for you, too. That, that yeah, and you know, I didn't, I didn't actually pitch myself to play it. It was Dean who pushed me to. To play uh, I couldn't mom. imagine anyone else to play that. But. And now I look back and I'm like, but that's the thing. Like I, I, I think I so approach things with the idea of really giving other people as many opportunities as we can. Because I think of like Viola Davis' poem when she said there are Oscar. The only thing that separates, she said, you know, the only thing that separates women of color from anyone else is opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I brought that, when I when I wanted to produce this script, I was like, I would love it to be. A woman of color, you know, ideally, preferably, a, you know, a darker-skinned Filipino woman like my mom, and that was that was my one, that was my one line in the sand that had to be the case, and I wasn't intending it to be me, but Dean was like, "Well, you know her the best. Why don't you play it?" That's awesome. Give it up again for Somali guys. <laughs> She's been so good.
been, you've won an award for your for your movies, and you are you know continue continue to flourish in your in your career as an actress. So good for you. Uh, you're just getting started, right? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just don't EP for movies while you're seeing each other. That's the lesson learned. Um, now, I mean, a, as you are talking about you know writing and um, producing your own script. Now, Gio, yeah. you actually wrote your own script and you got the chance to direct it. Um, There's a story. There is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> um, okay, so. Being an actor for 20 years, actually I have to give it up to Somali because I've always looked up to you. And I like just leaving the path, like breaking down like stuff and you know, putting like feet in the sand for us to follow in. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, I like, we were in the same acting class and I always, I, I remember when you moved to ER, I remember that story where you were talking about how like you were like going over your suitcases and it was late and it was like, yeah. But I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, anyway, sorry, I just love that story here. I haven't seen her in 20 years, so, um, yeah. Okay, anyways, uh, back to uh, the writing thing. So, I moved to LA, uh, like, six years ago, I think, and from the Bay Area, and I was kind of disillusioned with ha the lack of roles for actors, and I was like, okay, well, we can be up and in single, right? So, we have to, like, make our own opportunities. And the very first film that I did was, uh, it was just me and a laptop, and I literally just spoke into the camera, and I ended up putting an honorable mention at Outfest. So I was like, okay, maybe there's something there. And then my second film, which was a short, was like, uh, it won like 12 awards at various film festivals all across the country. I was like, okay, there's a little bit of a track record. And then my third film um, was also a short, and it, it won the Harm Die Evolve Innovation Award, where they actually gave me a little bit of cash. Um, this particular feature film that I did, I was actually commissioned to write it. Um, the lady that commissioned me to write it went to the Philippines, went to the Philippines and met her childhood love, and they had this whirlwind romance uh, between uh -huh. Philippines and Bali and the United States, and there was a lot of um, difficulties with immigration and being apart, and COVID hit, and all kinds of stuff happening. So I wrote this script because uh, to tell their love story, but also we took dramatic license because uh, he was a very conservative Christian, and she was a very worldly, successful, like sexy like, lady, and so it was like a clash between worlds. And I came from a Christian biblical cult, so I <laughs> love that. I cast that movie. <laughs>
Chi Hyo and I actually, when we were in acting class, uh, attempted to produce our own TV series called Kung Mal, where we play <laughs> twins with superpowers. <laughs> I think there's a clip on YouTube. Oh my god! <laughs> and I ended up in, in Twisted. I'm the mother of those twins. Yeah, you all stole it from us. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> and we had superpowers, and we actually kicked ass, right? Yeah, that was like our first time. We had fight scene. We had fight scenes, and I was like, we were working with stunt doubles and stuff, and it was, I think, you know, we from the from the jump already had uh, this idea that we we couldn't just be actors, especially at being underrepresented, um, that we had to do something for ourselves, and we had to take liberty to stop asking for permission and just do it. And it actually ended up getting written up on what, ABS, CBN, the newspaper or whatever, so something like that. Never completed it, uh, <laughs> but we might one of these days if we can still go back to our young selves. But um, having said that, independent films, um, Lupia with a Vengeance, uh, April Absent uh, from Lupia, uh, and how big that became, you know, um, and I, it's, it's, this whole thing is very nostalgic to me because I know they're from my past, but Patricio is also from my past. He went to college with him. What? As a state, yo, represent. As a state? Gators. The Gators. Gators. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, so I feel yes. like, you know, you're an extension of that, you know, but uh, tell us about that and, and, and what that experience was like for you because, you know, when they made Lupia, I know, he was like, I didn't think it was like, do anything, but yeah. you guys had part two. I know, vengeance. and and we're working on making part three happen. So y'all heard it here first. So we're gonna be a part three, yeah. Thank you so good for that because I'm sure you know we love all of your support and all of your gifts and um you know all of your stories really do contribute to each and every one of our stories that are up here and it's just a very like symbiotic thing and before I go into what it takes to what it was like working on Lumpia I mean I'm just hearing your guys' stories and how everything just permeates into one another and how you asked me or you, you talked to me about you and Patricio growing up together and going to SF State where we went to also um, and it, there's something about being really positive to work with because those connections will stay wherever you go and they will continue to come back in the same way that I'm sitting here because I work with Patricio, who you've got to grow up with. Um, so just karma. Um, storytelling is all about capturing karma. And that's how we all got to sit here today. And that's what Lumpia was for me. Um, I was going through a really bad uh, breakup at the time. Uh, and I decided in that moment that I was going to go back into acting. Because um, I kind of stopped acting uh, for a lot of reasons. One was I did move out of the state to another state, which did not have any acting opportunities. Um, and I was out there for a year, and then when I came back, I, I didn't continue acting in theater because there weren't a lot of roles for Asians either. So I just kind of went along with life, and then when that moment hit me that I was like, okay, you know what, F it, I'm gonna go all in, I don't care what you have to say, I'm gonna do me. And three months later, I got uh, an agent, and shortly after that, I got the breakdown for Rachel, who oddly enough <laughs> was a Filipina American girl who was in high school. I wasn't in high school anymore. But uh, she was like spicy and spunky and uh, went to school in the Bay Area. And I was like, oh, <laughs> how often, how often do you see? Three things in a breakdown as a brown American girl or woman in this time. And it was just such a, a monumental moment that captured how far um, 
society had gone and how far filmmaking had gone that we got to see a breakdown like that. And so I auditioned because I was like, this would be so stupid for me not to audition for this. Like, how much more can the universe tell you before you accept what it's trying to tell you and what it's trying to give you? So I auditioned and um, I got it. They held auditions in LA and in the Bay Area. Um, and I got to play Rachel, uh, who is, she kicks ass. And here I am, you know, hoping to play a superhero one day for Marvel or for DC, but really, like, I need to be happy that I got to play a superhero in this independent film. Like, that is such a huge win. Um, and to have worked with all of the people many of them who are a part of Philam Creative and and outside of Philam Creative, I just, it was so special because I felt like for, I, I was working with family, um, and that is so rare. It doesn't, not even just in Hollywood or in film or in TV, but even just in the, in any workplace, it's hard to find a space that you can call your second home and really be like, oh my God, this is family, I'm so excited to go to work today. <laughs> I'm not going to talk any gossip or anything. We're just going to have a great time. <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I promise, I swear. <laughs> it just, uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but that's what I mean. Like, we got to just work and have a great time and create together and, and believe in each other, that part. I think the best part about working on Lupia with a Vengeance was just observing how much everyone believed in each other and believed in each other's gifts and believed in each other's talents and encouraged each other's talents. And it was just such a positive environment. And that's what made it become as big as it was. Um, alongside Patricio Janelso just being this mastermind. I tell him every time we hop on a call, I'm like, I don't know how you do it. Like, what are you, do you sleep? Ever like where he tells me the ideas and the strategy and what's gonna happen next and I'm like how do you think of these things I only have I was telling my new friend Logan over here earlier that my joke is I have run out of like memory in my brain I reached full capacity that I need a new hard drive installed in order to retain new memories um, and I only have room for in my brain for like lines and lyrics and that's it. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so just believing in yourself and believing in your comrades is such a huge part of how the Loopy movie got to screen at theaters nationwide and it got to hit all of the film festivals. And at a time when COVID and the pandemic was bringing everybody down. And so it can be the most difficult time in your life, but there's so much room to catapult you forward in those dark times. Like if I wasn't going through my breakup and I didn't decide to do me and I didn't decide to pursue what my heart was telling me to pursue and my dreams, um, I wouldn't be sitting here with you guys today. Um, so the biggest thing that that movie has taught me is to just honor your gifts and to honor your through listening to what they're trying to tell you. Hell yeah. How do you weaponize Lupia, right? You, <laughs> did they just weaponize Lupia? Well, we got some outside still. I can show you. <laughs> Unfortunately, I ate the last few bites. Oh, well. <laughs> um, we did that for you because we knew you were coming, so we're like, Luca. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Shout out to our sponsor, uh, Fiesta Fast Food. So <laughs> thank you for the Lupia. Um, having said that, you know, we were talking about the differences between independent films and mainstream media, and you know, I think at the uh, at the core of what we're talking about is creating great work so that the mainstream media even if you're doing it independently, that the mainstream media cannot ignore you, that they will buy your film, that they will distribute your film, and having someone from casting, you know, studio films, right? Um, 
and and someone who casts independent films, you know, the difference is there's just a lot of suits deciding, right? I mean, can you let us in on the importance of, of or, or just, just, just the transparency behind, you know, creating a film and having it be distributed by a studio and what really it requires to, to do that? Okay, so most of my experience has been with Clint as a casting director, and he is in an odd position because for the longest time we didn't have to run anything by anybody. So we, it was a weird, it was awesome because he kind of got to do whatever he wanted, which was fantastic. Now, Warner Brothers was taken over, and we got new people in, and now we're starting to feel the, um, grips of the studio more running all your lists. Oh, did you check this part? All that other stuff. Oh, we don't want to make a movie with this guy, but this person is great or whatever. Before, uh, Clint was never necessarily into, he doesn't need a star. He'll always say whoever's best. So I remember when we were doing Richard Jewell in 2018 ish, 2019, somewhere around there. Um, Paul Walter Hauser now, obviously, he just won a Golden Globe. He's kicking ass. He's amazing. He always has been. But I remember getting a lot of pushback from the studio saying, we want to star. We don't, we don't want Paul Walter Hauser. I was like, but he's kind of perfect. Um, and what solidified for me was Bobby Jewell, Richard's real mother, came to visit us at the office, and we went to have lunch just at the commissary at Warner Brothers with Clint and the producers and all. And uh, Clint was like, hey, why don't you call Paul? Get him down here. So I was like, all right, yeah, I'll go get Paul. So I went to the office, go pick up Paul. We went back to the, the, the commissary. And as I introduced him to Mrs. Jewell, she literally just locked eyes, slowly reached out her arms, and was like, you're my Richard. Oh, and I was wow. like, oh, damn. That was crazy. <laughs> I don't care what they think. This is who I want to cast. Yeah. And, and when Clint saw that, too, he's like, yeah, this, this is it. This is... Yeah, there's no looking further. He was the only person I suggested. And that's usually, that's, you know, that doesn't happen all the time either. There's just something so, I mean, Richard Jewell's very specific, so it's not like a million people could play Richard Jewell. Um, so there are, on the other shows I worked on at studios, yeah, they're all over you. There's so many cooks in that kitchen. And it's to the point where it strangles things and you don't even know what you're making at some point. You're just like, this doesn't make any sense. So there is a lot of that. The problem is they, they're the ones that have the money. They're the ones putting these things out. And if you don't like, you know, go along, um, you know, you're gonna have issues. So there is that balance. Um, but yeah, working with Clint, it's been very different. It's, it, it's almost like we kind of, it was like we financed our own stuff, but we didn't. We used other people's money, but we didn't have to run anything by. So that was a dream. And to work your essential entire career where you just have to run it through this one guy if I could convince Clint, I'm good. And I studied psychology. I didn't study film at all. So for me to be able to do something, just to see how people are reacting, kind of get a read on things, and even in the casting room and the auditions, just to pick up subtleties. I love human behavior. I love how people interact with one another. And uh, you could all see one situation and describe it a billion different ways. And I'm like, we were all there, just, but we all saw different things. So that's very fascinating to me. But uh, so yes, I agree. Studio systems usually in the way. I kind of skirted that a little bit, and I felt a little bit in the tail end of my uh, stuff. But yeah, for the most part, it is a nightmare. I will hand it over to Dean <laughs> for the other side of things. <laughs> I've done both actually. So I've done studio and I did iRobot as an assistant. That was one of my first movies. And, um, but I started in commercials, and that is the same as the studio system. It's like there's so many pots in the kitchen and 18 chefs and everybody's boiling something. And, um, but you know, I learned really early on in my career to stand up for what I believed in and fight for people. You know, and that, that's made all the difference because I'll be like, no, you don't understand. This little girl's gonna be a movie star, you know, Cameron Diaz. You know, um, no, she's really good. I'm sorry, you know, I'm, no, hire her, you know. And it's like, look, you know, Billy Demoto was my partner and husband for many years, um, and he's Chinese, uh, you know Billy, of course. He says hi. Um, I said, what's up? But, you know, he, <laughs> um, 
he always would bitch because he started in the studio system and um, and hated it because of, because there's so many people telling you what to do. And then I've done a bunch of network television, and it's the same thing with the network TV. The independent stuff, though, you have to mean you know you have to still hire stars that are going to sell your movie. Um, and I love Eric Roberts. God bless him. He's one of my favorite friends, um, and he works all the time. And it's like, but I he doesn't, he's not selling movies right now. And I want him to do something really big. So if you've got something big for Eric, give it to him. Um, hopefully it's my movie. Hopefully it is your movie. And he's so amazing as an ally. Advocate. He's such a damn good actor. Yeah. I mean, he's brilliant. He's one of the. He's my. And when he's a close friend of mine, I love him. It's like, but I mean, and I told, I pitch him all the time, and people are like, well, he's done so much, and you know, I don't know that he's worth anything anymore. And I'm like, no, he's an Academy Award nominee. You know, he's a Golden Globe a, a nominee or winner. Oh uh, no, he's an Academy Award nominee, I think. And also Golden Globe. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. You got a minute for both. So uh, my point of that is, so if you're making movies, you still have to follow along with what the box office is going to bear. And you need to not only look in the United States, but worldwide. You know, because some people will sell them in the United States and, and not sell worldwide, and some people will sell worldwide and not in the United States. And it, you know, it's been such a, you know, a really strange thing. Is that door just open? It's been a really strange thing to uh, watch the movies change so drastically to where we're, we're not worrying as much about it, but we're still having to hire the duo movie. I mean, he, now, because you, he's a movie star and I got to hire him. You know, or he actually, he wrote the movie I did, but, you know. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> That will be the next workshop, guys. We're going to do a workshop on distribution. <laughs> Brought to you by Phil and Creative. <laughs> no, and that's really kind of the thing that we try to establish here at Phil and Creative. Is like, what does this community need? What do we need more of? And things like that, just like even having a panel discussion like this and things like that come up, it's a great idea. Why don't we have that? And why don't we educate our community in how that is, you know, how we can do that? Um, that's why we want to create a writer's workshop, a uh, writing competition, uh, soon to be film, film festival, um, as well as, you know, um, a mentorship program, which any of you guys who want to apply for that to be a mentor or a mentee, that's going to be uh, spearheaded by Dre, Drea Casho, uh, our VP of Career Development, soon. Uh, so look out for that. We do want to highlight the importance of community. And you guys are all here contributing to this community. All the talent up here has contributed to the community today just by being here and sharing with us your knowledge. So I want to give a round of applause for our panelists today. Uh, so 
thank you guys for working hard for being a part of this and, and all the proceeds that we're getting from this are going to all these programs that we're gonna have in the future. We do uh, want to uh, play something real quick uh, for the 10th anniversary. Um, just before we, uh, we bow out. Yes, um, yeah. if you have any announcement, please. Uh, no, no announcement, just wanted to uh, touch on what you were talking about with community. Um, we don't have to necessarily be in a position at a studio to make distribution happen. Mm -hmm. We can be sitting in our seats right now and follow each other, and follow each other's um, projects on Instagram because yes, money talks, but also numbers these days talk. So if you're seeing your homie here post a story about their movie, share it. Share it and tell all of your friends to follow it because when, when they succeed, you succeed. We all succeed if we support each other and it doesn't cost any money, it's just a post and sharing and telling your friends to follow it. And really, really believing it, you know, because like I said, things permeate from one moment to the next, and when we help each other now, we're helping our generations after us succeed too. Yeah, support, support one another, guys. With so much, so much content out there. You know, you're gonna be releasing your movie soon. That's Love and Karma, right? You got Karma. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Somali has a what? The Black Barbie documentary. Uh, uh, amazing. Uh, you know, Fabulous Family Brothers. You guys will watch that. It's so cool. Lubia with a vengeance. You know, it's not just the studio films that, that you hear on commercials. You know, really seek out, you know, these independent films that are out there that are readily available for you guys. This is the only way we're gonna cut through the noise and get to become a part of the mainstream. Uh, how are we doing on the video? Ready? Ready? Yeah. All right, guys. Here we go. For me, uh, how I overcame those things, I kept working on, on, on what I can do. I, I, I would do not a the theater job just to working because if I just wait, this is not going to develop, you know, and, and, and I, I kind of use that chip, you know, to my advantage and, and really hone in on my, who I am. And I'm an, I can be an intense person, and I, I, I like that. And I think from then on, um, just, just keep on working, keep on working and, and failing so many times that helped me and uh, when when I got I think when I got that really big break of Versace I I was ready for it. I was I, I was ready for it and um, and I grabbed it. You know the, the opportunity grabs you and you grab onto that opportunity.
support us, because we support all of you. So check them out. Fill up creative. Thank you for being here.